Hey folks, this is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this is the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, sending me them sweet old thumbs up. We're going to be doing a center carrier bearing on the Chevy Equinox, Saturn View, Pontiac Torrent, rear differential here, drive shaft. If you've got a question for me, you can reach out to me on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger, and I'll happily try to answer all of your automotive related needs. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. So we're going to be taking off this U-joint because there's a bolt underneath here that we need to get to to remove this to be able to press our carrier on. And on the eBay, I've got this and it came with a new U-joint, so we're going to be throwing both of them in there. First, as you can tell, I grabbed them pliers already. We're going to go ahead and tack this, take this snap ring out of here. And if we can't get it out with that, we'll just take a chisel, punch and we'll break that clip off there and get all four of them off from around the outside of the u-joint okay realistically speaking we should be able to take a pair of pliers stick them down in there and pinch this together but we live in the rust belt here in michigan so we have to use a punch and a hammer hopefully this works out where i can show you guys this I should also mention that it's helpful if you push down on the tap down on the cap a little bit. Hopefully that'll unseat your your clip here. Once that clip feels like it's moving and we can see that it's out right there, can do the other side or at least attempt to. Then we should be able to stick a screwdriver underneath it to lift it up. Once we got it up like that, can take a screwdriver and start to pull up on it. Now we don't want to be we don't want to break it because this one's rusty. So what we're gonna try to do is pick it up and then pull it out with a pair of pliers. It'd be the easiest way. Pick it up like that. Hopefully we can grab the pliers on it. Usually they're a lot simpler than this. Just wiggle it a little bit. Just trying to break that rust off of it. Start wiggling out. And we broke it all the way off. Which is kind of a problem in some ways. Get in it right there, or we can come back here with our flathead screwdriver, take it out. We'll try this. Voila. A lot easier than the last one I showed you guys that you didn't get to actually see because I've had it in and out. Okay, best case scenario, we can hit right here, and that'll bring that cap up. I don't think it's going to work, but... Is. We're not hitting it like a girl, but we're not hitting it like super strength because we don't want to bend the end of the anvil. But it's working, so if we can get it up, we might be able to pull it out with a pair of pliers. So we'll do that. We'll flip the drive shaft over and do the same thing on the other side. really trying not to mushroom over this outside edge because we need to get our caps through there. And we're taking off this part of the drive shaft first because it's encompassing working with the long drive shaft. Before I get some hate mail, you can, oh that's nice, you can uh, use a socket to push these out. It's just if this works, it's quicker. It's quicker and simpler. Okay, if you want to press it out with your vise and a couple sockets, go into the drawer. This segment was about three or four minutes long, and it's totally unnecessary. You want one 
that the U-joint yoke will fit into and one that only fits on the outside of the U-joint yoke and will actually go down inside there so you can press them out. Now we want to make sure our socket is centered on there so our cup will go inside it. Okay, so down inside here, we can see a little clip down inside there. We've got to get that clip out. Now, while we're here, I just want to mention that we need to clean these grooves out real well and take some Scotch-Brite and scuff this up inside here just to make sure it's real clean. Take some brake cleaner and clean it off before you go to reinstall your U-joints. We've also got ours marked, just in case I didn't say it before. So we make sure it goes back on here, but I'm pretty sure that there's a centering there. This only goes on one way, but just in case we need well, to mark it. I know that the end is right here. So I've got my pick. This clip was a serious pain in the butt. You could have tapped down on the yoke and that might have made it easier. Most of the time, I don't think YouTubers show you this because it is seriously a pain, especially if it's rusted in there just like mine was. I tried all sorts of different tools. And finally, I got it out. I have a sneaking suspicion that the reason that we don't ever see this clip removed on the YouTube is because of the ways you have to remove it. And there's a lot of cussing and swearing going on. I honestly can't remember the last time I removed one of these clips. So I ain't gonna lie. At this moment, I'm not certain what to do, but I'm certain that I will figure something out. That much I know. I know if anybody else can do it, I'm sure I can too. Okay, I got tired of messing with this thing, so I just went ahead and heated it up. And we'll see if we can pull these. Yeah, that bends a lot better when it's heated up. That spring steel ain't no match for anything. So now hopefully we can take the screwdriver and run it around on the outside and knock that flipper right out of there. Not have to pull with it. So I would imagine at home you guys could use like a burns a matic if you don't have a torch. So we'll go ahead and pick up underneath that thing with the screwdriver. Let's see if we can work it around a little bit more with these uh, needle nose here. I don't know exactly how we're gonna get it out, but it better come with a new one, that's for sure. If not, we're gonna have to get a new one. Now, end of it broke off there, but that's okay. I don't think that really matters all that much. Now, we take our little screwdriver and hopefully push this other side out I'll let you know if it's coming out yeah it's seemed to work its way out working in the working in the handle in my screwdriver though so that kind of stinks all right okay so she's coming out a little bit now we should be able to get our pick and pick into there and pick that away. That's the hopes. Okay, so we have our bearing separator here, a long socket to reach in between there. We've got it set up. Be very careful. This is not the exact way to use the socket and to push this out going to be a lot of force behind it. Oh, she's rusty. A won't hurt Make sure your work isn't getting all weird as you apply pressure to it. Definitely going down. Okay. 
Yeah, you ain't knocking this thing out with a hammer in the driveway, that's for sure. To get her to come free a little bit easier. I have pressure on my press, so this will allow it to come out a little bit quicker, I hope. Bing, and she's out. Now be careful when removing this. If you heated it up like me, obviously it's gonna be hot. All right, so now we can just go ahead and pull this puppy out. Now we need to separate the bearing. There, right between this gap right here, so we can put that in the press and press that off. Now we need to pull off our bearing. So obviously we've got our bearing separator out again and we're using that in our press, and we're gonna press that bearing off. Make sure work is centered. I'll reach my arm underneath, make sure my drive shaft doesn't drop on the ground, and push it the way off. Rest the way off. Snaps off, pops right out. Okay, taking a wire brush, we're going to clean up our splines, pull the rest of the bad stuff off. Okay, so now that we've got our splines cleaned up, we're going to add a little bit of anti-seize on there. And don't worry, I know what you folks are thinking. Why didn't I mark this? It's clocked. You can only put it on one way. So you could probably get it on more than one way, but you'll see the splines in there that you need to find to locate where this goes. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bubble out facing towards the center of the drive shaft forward to the transmission right there. And that's the same way we took it off. We can take a socket and I just had one sitting here that was actually perfect for that and drive it on there with the anti-seize and everything. Once you get that on there, it should drive on real smooth. Okay, so we got our socket on there and I don't have this in the vise very tight. But we're gonna try to tap it down just like that. I'm making sure that my socket does not dig into my bearing cover right there, the dust cover for that. So I'm using a socket that's the right size. I'd like to say that we're fairly bottomed out right there. We might be able to go down a little bit more, but when we go to push our top on there or the U-joint yoke, should push it down the rest of the way if we're not. Okay, so if we look right around here, we're gonna see this area right here where the two teeth are joined together. Hopefully the camera will focus in right there. And they're joined together and they're not separated like these ones are. Okay, so I little used a little bit of heat to get that puppy to push down on there and with my hammer and setting it down on the ground, tapping it on. And she is inserted all the way. We should be able to get her clip in there once this thing cools. Okay, so we're gonna wanna take the clip and try to put it on this way right here. So we're gonna put the edge down inside there and then we're gonna take a screwdriver and we're hopefully gonna pry this puppy right back over here. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tap down the rest of that clip. I'm not certain that this is the easiest way to put it on, but this is the way I got it on, so it is what it is. We can pull that out, our clip is in there, so we don't have to worry about that falling out. Okay, we're just about ready to install our U-joints, so we wanna make sure we take a pick tool and clean out the rust ring in here on both edges and all four corners that we're gonna install a U-joint. Then once we've done that, we wanna take some emery cloth, sandpaper, uh, Scotch-Brite, and we wanna work out inside here, making sure that we take down all the rust. If we fill any tings where we were taking out our 
U-joints, we need to make sure we get a file and file them down. You'll notice that it's not uniform, like that would be a little ting, but we don't need to file that down because that's on the ring. But we do need to file down if we've got flat spots or you can feel this edge right here. We might need to file that down to make sure that the U-joint will go all the way through like it's supposed to. Now that we got that all cleaned out, not a ton of rust in there, now we can insert our U-joints. Because these U-joints are cheap Chinese ones, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of grease inside there, and that helps hold my bearings in better. Now with my one hand, I'm gonna take and put my U-joint up inside there and slide it as far up as I can with my fingers. So my bearings don't fall out, I'm gonna go ahead and insert my U-joint inside there, but I need two hands to do that. With my U-joint on a flat surface and the U-joint itself squared inside the hole, turning the drive shaft where I need it to be, I'm going to strike it on the outside of the, the inside of the ear right here to drive my U-joint down, holding on my U-joint as I push it up to not pop the bearings out of place. And that will help get it seated. Making sure that I keep it square inside the hole as I do so. Okay, now I'm going to insert my other U-joint cap down inside the hole and I'm gonna pull up on my U-joint. I'm not gonna put it all the way in place or pull it all the way out of here because I do not wanna lose my bearings down inside there. But I wanna make sure it's seated and centered inside there. Then I will flip my drive shaft over, once again, striking it on the flat spot and driving the U-joint cap down inside the center of the U-joint. If you get your U-joint started and it will not turn, give the ears a little whack, like this, and then your U-joint will turn. Now, with your U-joint caps on, we can go ahead and push them in a little bit further if they won't come together with their vise maybe using a pair, couple sockets inside there to push them together or even the old bearing caps will be helpful. Okay with my U-joint tool I went ahead and pushed my cap the rest of the way through because I couldn't get it to go in there for some reason. More than likely it's because mine is a very cheap Chinese part. Now with my cap pushed past the cap and I can go ahead and put the clip right inside there. Now we want to make sure that the ends pop out and the clip pops in there just like it did. Now we'll tighten our other U-joint up in the vise, pushing it down with the socket. We have to bury the U-joint down inside there far enough to be able to get our clip in. Now we need to make sure that clip goes all the way in there. So we might have to give it a little bit more push in the press, or we might even be able to take our hammer and knock it in. As long as the tangs separate, then we know it's down inside the groove, but right now it's not. Now I've got my clip in there. They make this look simple on all the other videos you watch on YouTube, but they don't show you all this shenanigans going on right now. All right, if your U-joint won't move freely, just take your hammer and give a couple taps up here on the bottom, and then that will spread the forks out and allow it to loosen up your U-joint. Okay, so now we're gonna insert 
our U joint into our U joint right there. And we're gonna go in from this way to here. We need to make sure that we line up our white marks. Okay, so now I've got my cap inside there. I'm going to insert my other drive shaft in between the two. And then I will be able to insert my U joint into my cap. I got that inside there. Now I can take and insert my other cap into my U joint. Now I can take my cap, put it down inside there squarely, and we should be able to give it a little bit of a push. Now I want to raise up on my U joint to pull my U joint up into the top of this cap. Now I can take a hammer and I wanna make sure that I try to hold up on my bottom of my U-joint so it doesn't slip down and my bearings don't fall out and I can start tapping in my cap. Now that we've got that inside there, now we can go ahead and press the U-joint together so we can start putting in our clips. You can do that one of two ways with the vise or with this. It further than I wanted to, but it does allow me to easily get my clip in. So I'm gonna go ahead, put my clip in, make sure my clip goes inside the grooves, and then I will flip it over and push it again. Give it a little pop right there. You're hitting right here on this outside edge. And that will free up your U-joint so it works as it should. Okay, so I don't think you folks need me to show you how to reinstall this since you already have it out. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification so we can continue to help more people just like you with their automotive related needs. If you've got a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I happily answer them for free for subscribers. God bless you. Don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. And if anyone else can do it, you can do it too.